live the life beyond the boundaries we set on ourselves. To live and to run boundless. To be inspired, to achieve, to overcome the mountaintop in our life. Embrace the journey, become boundless. Hello, family. Welcome to our 10th episode of Live From Boundless Podcast. Today, I have on the show a woman that has and still is doing some incredible things in her life. Um, she's this, an author, motivation speaker, entrepreneur, full of absent trips, a lifestyle coach. Also, she has been featured in V Magazine, Parent Magazine, and Running World Magazine. I got to find out more about that. Um, also, she competed in numerous races, which includes several Boston Marathons, New York Marathon, a Ultra Runner, and Ironman races. <laughs> and she recently won Speaker of the Year with her Toastmaster chapter, the top chapter in San Diego. Um, I probably know I'm going to miss some more titles to her name. But, but if I if, if I am, she can help me out with that. But family, let welcome Miss Kara Oliver. Kara. Kara, my mom apologized. Kara. No Oliver. worries. It happens all the time. Yeah, I believe you were born in Livingston, Tennessee. Yeah. Uh, Long time resident of Richmond, Virginia, but now I live in San Diego, California. So Miss Kara, Kara Oliver, welcome to live. Round balance on a podcast. Uh, so first, how are you doing today? And thanks for joining the family. Thank you. I'm doing well. You know, I I have to say I'm so grateful for every single day yes. of, of my life. So yeah, it's been a great day. Thank you for having me. Yes, yeah, definitely. Um, I believe we first connected on, on Facebook. I think we had some of the same friends in the running community. Um, I know one of her, I think, um, Nell, Nell Bell. Nell Bell. Yeah, yeah. She, she connected to all of us, you know, out here in the San Diego area. It comes to trail running, you know, so that yeah. she, she girlfriend uh, of mine also, you know, and probably many others we really got connection with. And so, um, um, yes, but Lincoln, do your bio. You've been there. You've done that. Um you accomplish a lot in your career, but behind all this, that success is a journey. It's a process to get there. Um, so what's your journey? What's your process that allow you to be who you are right now? Well, that's, that's a big, big question, but I love how you position that because you're, you're so right. You know, defining success, it's different for a lot of people. But for me, it's actually being happy and, and joyful. Yes. That, that's, yeah, that's success. In fact, I just talked to a woman this morning who was feeling bad because she was struggling with that. And, and she kept saying, you know, I shouldn't be upset about anything. I have everything I need. Yeah. She's a yeah. very wealthy woman. And, yeah. and I said, you know, but it's, it's not about that. You're, not, you're right. human. Yes. You know? Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, the, the journey has been a fascinating one, a difficult yeah. one, a beautiful one, a painful one. It's, really been all of those things and you know I, how far back I could go I, gosh I guess a long way but I'll probably start with the biggest shift that happened in my life or what caused it and yes. created it which was the loss of my four and a half month old son yes. yeah yeah okay. and he he passed away of sudden infant death syndrome Yes. And yeah, which really means it's called SIDS is what they call it, or SUIDS now, sudden unexpected infant death. And, yes. and it really means we don't know really what happened. Okay, I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. And um, 
But, you know, through that, I ended up starting a foundation with the help of friends and family in his honor. I feel you know, very confident that I've helped a lot of people, which is why I'm smiling. You know, <laughs> I'd rather him be here, yeah. but yeah. whoa, what he has taught me. Oh, wow. wow. Are you yeah. able to find like a light in the midst of the darkness or wherever, trying to like um, find a way to help others? Do the death of your son, do something tragic, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, it was, uh, I didn't see this. It took me many years to even um, understand it. Yeah, so definitely, of course. Yeah, absolutely. And while I was doing all these great things, and in fact, one of the things that saved my life, I'm certain of it, is uh, running, which we can talk more about. But yes. I, I began running, fell in love with it. <laughs> the camaraderie yeah. of the friends, uh, you know, all your running buddies, you know, I, yeah. I mean, Kenneth, it's so mm -hmm. it's amazing. And that's why when I talk to people, because I am a life coach now as well, I call it a lifestyle and mindset coach. Okay. I am, I try to inspire them. I'm like, you have to get involved in mm -hmm. things with other people. Yes. I that I totally agree. Yeah. It helps you get out of your head, you know? I know. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it just, yeah, it just, to be around people, to get uh, have that support around you, it just really kind of get you out of your funk, you know. It just really, yeah. um, it helps with some so many things, you know. Yeah, and uh, just you could relate to to people, and you know, it maybe help with somebody else. You know, you being helped and you help with somebody else also at the same time. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So and I think that's where. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Kenneth. Oh, uh, I know. Um, so you, you, as a part of my next question about how running and fitness has, oh, and has running and fitness all been part of your life, as you know, with something that you grew up uh, in running and, fit, and fitness. So I was actually, I mean, yes, but not like now at all. Right. I'm a completely different person now. <laughs> I was a cheerleader. Okay. I, I dabbled in basketball, but I'm very petite, so that probably that didn't work out all that. You know, I, I played in basketball in like elementary school. Okay, okay. Uh, became a cheerleader then as well, and then took that into high school. And I I played softball. I was like um, softball pitcher for like a hot minute, and um, and and so I did some things. Yes. But then my life kind of took a turn and I'll say I, it probably became a very experimental part of my life yes. and uh, trying to just figure out who am I and what am I doing and mm. all of these things. So is it really paying a lot of attention to fitness? I mean, I was at workout a couple times a week, yeah. but you know, now fitness is, it's a part of my lifestyle. Like it's a part of who I am. In fact, you probably don't want to hang out with me until I've had my workout or two for the day. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, no, yeah. I'm, I'm not that grouchy, but but my workouts are kind of like my coffee. Oh, yeah. I, I, I would thank you, Dad. I would thank you, Dad. I would say that. You know, you got to have your workout before you do anything, you know. Before you yeah. don't, don't talk to me until I've done my workout. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I mean, it's those endorphins. It just gets me fired up. Yeah, and it yeah. helps me to actually be better for all those around me because okay, I have a lot of responsibility and I take it very seriously mm -hmm. and I got to be great. You know, like okay. I'm not about being halfway. I'm about, I'm, okay. I'm all in. Oh man. Okay. I, I like that. that. That's awesome. Um, and so we're going back and forth in between different topics on, uh, when I also read your bio, bio you mentioned you love concern for the world, um, that we live in and the children in the world. Um, and that helped you create a nonprofit hand foundation named after your son. Um, can you tell us, the listener, the people that view more a little bit more about the hand foundation and what it was about? You know. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for asking. Upon losing Hayes, I quickly discovered that there was not a lot of information out there to educate people about. SIDS, okay. you know, sudden infant death syndrome. Mm -hmm. And that made me angry, to be honest. I, I was just like, I started searching online and like yeah. everything's about bereavement, which is important. Yes, yes. But 
I am a big believer in preventing things through education. Okay. Or at least reducing the risk. Yes, that's good. Yeah, yeah. And I decided to just jump into it. I didn't know what I was doing. I really didn't. But what I did know, and again, I had a lot of support, a lot of people behind me. And I had put the message out there. I'm like, hey, instead of spending money on flowers, if if that's something you're inclined to do, I would really rather you donate some money because we are going to find an organization to give this money to that can support the education of SIDS so that no one goes through this because this is, this is not, it was just such a difficult thing to go through and and live through. And and I'll always have that difficulty. I didn't want anybody to feel the way I felt. And that's ultimately why I started the foundation. Okay. Upon rece- yeah, and upon receiving the this, we gosh, I think we got like seven thousand dollars in donations in like four days, which to oh, wow. me was a lot. And yeah. and I looked at my friends and family, and I'm like, I think we should start our own foundation. Okay, yeah. Like we can't because we couldn't find people, organizations out there that were you know again supporting the education yeah. that were heavy in these other areas. I felt like, well, why can't we do that? Okay. Or figure, you know, again, I didn't know what I was doing. I'm like, we're just going to figure it out as we go. Yes. Yeah. So we did and became very successful at it. And we would, uh, we started doing a lot more research and finding other organizations out there um, that felt the same as we did and, you know, joined forces. CJ Foundation was one of them. And uh, it just ended up being great. Also yeah. created a national campaign. Oh. With these little onesies that say yeah. this side up while sleeping and tips mm-hmm. on the back. And that is actually uh, still going strong today. Okay, nice. That, that's awesome, you know. Uh, just, just find the cause and run it with it, you know. Yeah, so uh, you. You know, that, that, that's great. Uh, but not only do you have your business and projects here in San Diego, uh, we still run a company in Richmond, Virginia called Aller uh, uh, creative, uh, all over creative. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yeah, so, and so what is the story behind that? You know? Yeah. You know, it's interesting because when I think back of my first entrepreneurial experience, yeah. I actually owned a, uh, vintage and alternative clothing store in Nashville, Tennessee. Okay. I'm from Tennessee and I kind of had forgotten about that. And, yeah. you know, other things happened over the years, but ultimately I was um, working for this other company and we focused on web design and development. Yeah. And I had, I was in this department yeah. and I suddenly had someone come to me and ask me, Hey, can you help me get a website? And this has been quite a many, many years ago when people were doing a lot of custom, there's no WordPress. Then. Yeah. I just dated myself. But anyway, there was no WordPress. And I'm like, yeah, you know. And so I pulled together a developer and just did this little project. And I made like, I don't know, 4000 bucks doing this little project on my own. Yeah. And I was like, that's not bad. Yes. And it was when the light bulb went off. And I'm like, you need yeah, to man. get your company going. Okay, okay. So I did that very thing. Yeah. And I was married at the time. And yeah. I went to my husband. I said, Hey, I, I want to start my own company. And, okay. and so I had, you know, his support and yes. started it out of my home initially mm-hmm. and ended up growing to a, a small boutique of um, like 10 people. Mm-hmm. And we were considered one of the best companies in the mid Atlantic. Oh, wow. uh, yeah. And ended up being sought after by other companies who wanted to buy my company, which ultimately I did merge at a merger acquisition with a, um, a full service uh, PR agency out there okay. and they were missing their design team mm-hmm. and we became that team. Oh, okay. Then. That, that, that's great. So you're still running strong now uh, today with yeah. Oliver creative. No, I'm not. I do some small marketing projects on my own, but I ended up, you know, selling the company yeah. and um, yeah. And, and so all of the, that marketing experience though is serving me really well with yeah. all of these other projects. Cause I'm now, you know, I'm really in the wellness industry. Uh, yes. now. Okay. So you may focus wellness and uh, uh, lifestyle 
coach, you know, so now mostly uh, what you focus on right now. Yeah, yeah. So I am focusing on, I, I'm an author. I did release a, um, uh, my first book, first of many, I hope, okay. and working on a couple others, but a motivational speaker, yes. a, a you know lifestyle and mindset coach. I really focus on helping people learn how to use their mindset. If we go back to when I was kind of talking about haze and you know, yeah. many years had passed and I, I found myself to be very depressed. Yeah. And yeah. even though running had helped me so much, mm -hmm. I was still pretty depressed. And wow. I was in this place of thinking I was never going to live a joyful life. Like it, mm -hmm. it's just, that's not, that just not, not the card you were dealt kind of thing. And yeah. I was believing this. And I finally put my foot down and I was like, no, this is not real. This is my brain believing this. And it was, you know, when something like this happens, your brain has the ability to do two things. Okay. It has the ability to really believe what you're, you're thinking. Yes. It's all this negative stuff. Yes. But it also has the ability to stop believing that and to start realizing that there is this whole positive side yes. uh, over here. And it took me a while to figure that out because, you know, again, you can go into this deep, deep hole over yeah. here of negativity and it is hard to climb out of that. So I, I really want to bring awareness to that. Like when people say they're depressed, we need to listen. Like it's Yeah, yeah, definitely, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, sometimes we just take it for granted and lie really, oh, man, and I just, um, yeah. me, you know, but uh, being depressed, it, it, it's real, you know, it's legit, you know. Um, it is. It is. I know many, my come across many people who went to it, you know. Um, yeah, so it just, I mean, even for myself, you know, but growing up, how, how we grew up, you know, back in the 80s, whatever, you know, I tell them my age now, you know. Being depressed is something that I really, you know, really don't talk about, you know. I know. You know, being being a man, being a black man in the South, and being depressed. What was that? You know, <laughs> got to got to man out for something like that. You know. Yeah, it's it's a scary place, and I found myself yeah. um, feeling scared, and I decided to try to do something about it. And then I delved into a lot of research yes. and um, really working with mentors and studying these amazing people out there that were sharing their stories and being yes. vulnerable. Yeah. And I realized I wasn't alone. That's good. And I realized that I had the power, mm -hmm. the mindset. I was perfectly capable of pulling myself out of this. Now there's nothing wrong with anybody who, seeks you know whatever kind of help they need i think that's great yeah. i was very fortunate and that i just was very determined uh to work on this day in and day out and that's how the book came to life because okay. through techniques mm -hmm. and all of these things that i learned i i you know i started practicing it's kind of like a yoga practice yeah. when you practice if you ask me to do yoga right now, I am not going to look good. I'm a runner. My <laughs> hamstrings are tight all the time. <laughs> oh, well, you know what? Me, speaking of yoga, I, I just started doing it when my running. The, the people that I run with on Tuesday and Thursday, you know, we like to do, start doing yoga session and like yeah. every other Tuesdays, you know, at, at the yoga we do. We, after the run, we do yoga. And, so, uh, and so I'm learning, adapting, you know, I, hey, and, yeah. and you're probably getting better at it because you're yeah. being consistent, right? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's exactly what started happening with these techniques and, and things I started practicing to work with my mindset. Yes. And I would practice them. I mean, every opportunity that I would get, I learned these things and I would practice it. And over time, they become natural. Yes. Maybe I love it. Yeah, yeah, that, that's that's awesome. You know. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, um. Uh. So I, I noticed a common factor in everything that you do is about helping others to inspire and motivate uh, others around you. Um. Uh, 
has helping others always been something you desire to do since um, as a young adult? Um, uh, it always been part of you, um, I might say. You know, I got to be honest. I, I don't think so. Um, I don't think, I mean, definitely helping others in terms of their, I guess, business goals back when I was very, very involved in marketing and helping a lot of companies that way, yeah. uh, for sure. But I, I really don't think that my mindset was in, well, it definitely was not in the place it is now. I had to go through the, the loss of my son, which I, I would much rather him be here. And I was just talking to somebody about this earlier today. I'm a different person because of that loss. Mm -hmm. And the way I think about people and the way I think about helping people is so deep in my heart yes. because I felt that intense pain mm -hmm. and that fear and that depression. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, I don't want anybody to feel this way. And if they do, I want them to easily figure out and work to, to change that. So helping people is, is just a whole different kind of helping people now. Okay. I, think, I think I've always been, you know, involved from a business perspective of helping people. But this is just so different because it's so rich uh, to your life when you can learn how to do these things. It just changes your life so much. So, yeah, I think that I just don't want people – just have these struggles yeah. or if, again, if they do, I want them to feel equipped with ways to work through it. You know, the, I'd read about uh, some schools now, mm -hmm. maybe I'm not sure if they're here. I'm mm -hmm. hopeful there's some in the U S but some in some other countries that are starting to work with children at a young age to help them learn how to meditate, mm -hmm. how to work with their mindset, how to think positively. Okay. And that sort of thing. Oh, that, that's great. You know, uh, the, the mind is a powerful thing. You know, just um, the way you think, you know, could de determine what the word could determine how you live or, or whatever, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so, so definitely. And, and meditation, you know, some people like it, some you don't, you know. Uh, I kind of adapt to like meditation over the, over the years, and, you know, like going to my own my. My, my private place, my place where I can meditate, you know, my meditative place where I'd be out on the trails by myself. Yes, um, exactly. <laughs> There's different forms of it. You know, I think that yeah. for people who haven't experienced like, okay, I'm going to just be quiet for five whole mm -hmm. minutes, you know, yeah. that can feel odd to them. Uh, and obviously if you practice it, it changes. But yeah, like for me, a lot of my meditation happens out on the trails too. I mean, I'm climbing some mountain mm -hmm. and people are like, what do you think about for five hours and or however long it might be, it might be longer. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know, I, I didn't know. I just, mm -hmm. sometimes I just let go and I'm not really mm -hmm. thinking about anything. I'm just allowing my mm -hmm. mind to just be and appreciate and love and respect. Yeah. Yeah. And mm -hmm. and then sometimes I get, I will choose to get focused on something and I'll, you know, I'll just ask for the words, you know, give me the words that yeah. I need. I did that with my book every morning when I wrote okay. the way I got that book done. Yes. And I had a specific deadline. Okay. I woke up early. I'm an early bird. So I woke yeah. up very early and I would write for a minimum, and this sounds ridiculous, but it, it's crazy how it works. I'd write for a minimum of 15 minutes. Oh. And if I had more time, I'd keep writing. If yeah. my fingers yeah. were flowing and yeah, you know, my brain, I'd, but before I would start to write every single time, I would just ask for the words, please give me yeah. Yeah. the yeah. words that are going to impact someone's life. Yeah. And it is amazing. I mean, it yeah. works when you, I mean, when you think, right? No, I, I believe, you know, I mean, me being a person man of faith, you know, about my faith, you know, in God, you know, is that I, I ask for wisdom, direction, for the spirit to help me exactly. you know, in certain things, you know. And so, yeah. Um, exactly. And the only way it will happen, you know, and just uh, what you want to say, what you want to do, and uh, how you want to give, you know. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm, I'll even have, like, situations with, 
my my team, my staff, you know, and I'm like, you know, I, and and I I'm a believer too, so you know, just put it out there, and and I love it, and whatever you know, it works for each person, but yes. I would just say, you know, please give me the wisdom yes. to handle this in the best way I can, yeah. so that I'm a great leader. Okay, and I see all of us as leaders. Yeah, and when I ask for that. I have this sense, and, and so then the situation presents itself. Yeah. I have this sense of calmness. Yeah. I have more empathy. Yes. I, I feel like I am a better listener. Yeah. Yeah. And all of the things that I want to be so yeah. that I can then help somebody yeah. with whatever the situation is versus just telling them what to do. I, I think it's, it's, we're all in together. So, yeah. And we don't always know somebody else's circumstances either. No, I don't. Remember yeah. that. Yeah. yeah that, 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 that's, oh, yeah, that's the key. Just say to listen, you know, and just not to be rushed to, to talk, you know. And yeah. that, that, that's the same with marriage, you know. In fact, that will you know. We're working on, my ma on marriage, you know. Just yeah. be a good listener. <laughs> and then no, I, I think that's great advice, Kenneth, yeah. you know, it, it, for mm -hmm. any kind of relationship. And, uh, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely a marriage. Yes. Yeah, so, again, to your book, you know, uh, eight ways of being. Uh, what was the process? What the story behind that? You know, you know, starting your book. You know, um, and yeah. So, what the story behind eight ways of being? You know that? Yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting story. I have a copy that's in my reach. Maybe I can grab it in a minute and show you. Um, okay. I I should have had it here. Wait, I'll grab it real quick here. Okay. I know that I, I don't know if how it's going to show up, but this oh, is that's okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. And yeah, no, it's really great. Um, yeah. But what happened is when I lost Hayes, I wanted, I knew I was going to write a book because I knew yeah. I needed to share this story. Yeah. Yeah. When that first happened and I had this thought, I didn't have enough of the story yet. So many years go by and I still hadn't written this book. Yes. And I had, I had been doing some hostings on social media and I just happened to have posted these eight memes. So it was mm -hmm. one a day for eight straight days. And a friend, a very good friend reached out to me and said, Hey, you know, those eight memes that you just posted, okay. you, do you realize that's the outline to your first book? And I was like, oh, great idea. So I can look here yeah. and and tell you what they, I won't read all of them, but just the chapters. So the number one, love. Number two, physical fitness. Okay. Number three, mindful eating. Okay, yeah. Number four, long-term goals. Yes. Number five, dream big. Yes. Number six, play big. Uh, number seven, continual improvement. And then number eight, set your intentions. Okay, nice. So those, those were the eight things. And what was interesting, what I found to be, I believe, true yes. in, in the situation is that I hadn't written the book yet because I had not quite understood number one. Okay. Which is love. Love. No. And it just, you know, choose to love. That meant, doesn't mean you have to like, I'm reading now from my book. Okay. That doesn't mean you have to yeah. like everything that happens or mm -hmm. every behavior that you see. Yes. But if you fill your heart with love, mm -hmm. your stress will diminish. Oh, yes. And your zest for life mm -hmm. will continue, will consume, excuse me, your every breath. Yes. And that's what I had to learn because I didn't quite understand the value and importance of our heart. Yes. And God had to show me. Awesome. And I started again. That was a lot of the practice that started mm -hmm. happening. And once I started understanding that, this was ready to come out. Okay. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. And I'm just so mm -hmm. incredibly grateful I, and I share with people a lot because like chapter two is physical fitness. So yeah. I mentioned earlier how running is one of the things that saved my life. Yes. Oh, wow. 
totally. But I always express to people that, you know what, you can get into whatever you want. You can lose 10 pounds, gain 10 pounds, whatever your thing is that you feel like you need to do related to physical fitness or eating or whatever. Yes. But none of it's going to make you happy until you find number one, which is the love yeah. and the gratitude yeah. and the kindness and the peacefulness in your heart. Yeah, definitely. You know, it, it started with the heart, you know. Um, Totally. Yeah, it starts start with love, you know. You don't have love, you know, you could do be miserable, you know. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. like the woman I mentioned earlier, you know, that shared her – she didn't really – she didn't share why she was not feeling happy, just that she wasn't feeling happy and she felt bad because she had all these, you know, actual possessions mm -hmm. that – like, why should I? And she felt guilty about it. And mm -hmm. I just expressed her. I said, it doesn't matter yeah. what house you're in or car you drive or whatever. You're still human and you still have to feel that love and joy. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, so it's a love. It's a powerful thing, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and how have running, you probably, you probably already talk about it already, but how have running and health and fitness helped you and your everyday life, you know, from day to day. And mm -hmm. I, I know you mentioned it's like your cup of coffee, you know. So what else have health, your fitness help you in dealing with your day to day living? Well, first of all, I feel amazing. And yes. I don't mind that people guess me about 10 years younger than I am. So I'll go with that. No. Okay. And exercise, it, it's just phenomenal. Yeah. So, you know, endorphins it is called yeah. the happy drug yes and it's 100 percent natural yes and i i will say i'm addicted to it i i am i do yeah. more than i mean as you know i mean we're out there doing trails for a long yeah. period of time yeah. you don't have to do as much as i do to feel yeah. this good but i happen to love endurance uh activities and you know yeah. being an athlete in that way yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, but it, it's just that I, I feel, you know, my fitness is kind of like a shower, like I said, or like that morning coffee or whatever. Yeah. It makes me feel good. It makes me feel alive. It makes yeah. all these things, yeah. you know, just tick in my brain. And I'm able to be better for the people around me. Yes. So if I'm low, if I'm short on time for some reason, and this happens a lot, I'll get in something. Because <laughs> I'm tired usually towards the end of the day, so I'm better in the morning with my fitness too. Oh yeah, you know? me too. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but again, it makes me stronger yeah. for the people around me. It yeah. makes my brain clearer. Yes. I make better decisions. Yeah. I get out of that fog and yeah. that funk and whatever. And it's just been really a great thing for me. Yeah. Now I have abused it before and I'm going to admit that right. because I want people to understand. And I talk about that in the book a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Things not, not to do with fitness. <laughs> uh, one is so when I first started running, oh, yeah. I didn't know, this is really cool. I okay. didn't know. And I'm actually going to tell a funny story on myself. Okay. I didn't know I was a runner. Okay. I had no idea I was a runner. <laughs> okay. And so okay. I, I start running and I find out I'm a pretty decent runner. I'm not the best, but I'm not bad. And I've hit a few podiums in my time and yeah. I'm proud of that. Uh, but uh, I, you know, I, so I didn't know I was a runner and then I start running and I fall in love with it. And I watch every Prefontaine movie out there. I'm like, if y'all don't know who Prefontaine is, look him up. Okay. But uh, you know, pre is amazing. So that I was a road runner then. I was not doing any trail. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I ended up falling in love with the marathon. Qualified yeah. for Boston with my first marathon. But here's a funny story. I had no idea, and I'm gonna just tell this on myself because I think it's. Okay. Really cool. I had no idea what the Boston marathon was. Oh snap! What? Yeah, I had no idea. Oh, and so I qualified for the Boston Marathon and all my friends, you know, my new running friends, I've just been running with them for, I've probably only been running for about, I mean, I don't know, a few months, maybe yeah, yeah. eight or nine months or something. And they're coming up to me and they're like, you know, you have to go to Boston, don't you? And I'm like, okay, okay, I, I, okay, I'll go. 
And then it wasn't long before I knew, I found out what that meant, how amazing it was, how fortunate I was. Yeah. And and that's when I started watching all the pre-Fontaine movies. And I just really got into, like, I jumped, I got into running even more. I mean, I just yeah. fell in love. Oh, well, yeah. 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 And, yeah, it, it's just, you know, and it just went off from there. But the what not to do in that, one of the things is, so I began running and fell so in love with it that I would overtrain uh -oh. and I would do things like I wouldn't have recovery runs. I would just go out and run hard every single yeah. time. Yeah. And at that time I was also battling um, an eating disorder. And so guess what? You're not going to have healthy bones if you've got an eating disorder and or healthy anything for that matter but my bones started suffering i'm putting all this pounding on them yes. running fast every time stress yes. fracture after stress fra and the last thing anybody wants when they're in love with running is to be put on the sidelines tell me about it yes yes i know yeah, yeah. and we've all experienced the, yeah. you know these injuries and whatnot mm -hmm. i will tell you i also know a whole lot about how to continue training without actually running on pavement. Okay. <laughs> I figured out a way to do it all. I was like, I'm not going to stop training. Okay. But but seriously, it's important to train correctly, yeah. if, you know, and if endurance is your thing or you're racing or marathoning or whatever, I mean, great. If you're like, I'm just into doing yoga and I want to be great at yoga, yeah. that's fine too. Like it yeah. doesn't, you don't have to exercise for hours upon hours or any of that. A lot of people do. I do. I'm guilty of it, but I, I love it. And it's part of my lifestyle. But yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's about be consistent, you know, find out stuff you love, be consistent and try to do it with friends because those friends will continue to get you there yes. over and over. Yeah, definitely. Totally agree. You know, good, good to have support, you know? Yeah. Um, um, so out of the many achievements, you know, that you have in your life, that you have, you know, in your life had, what have brought you the greatest joy so far uh, to this point in your life? When someone tells me. Now, what have brought you the greatest joy, you know? And yeah, that, what's, what's brought me the joy? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. The greatest joy is when someone tells me either they've messaged me or you know i go on facebook and i've got a private message or somebody writes something somewhere yes. calls me whatever or texts me and says you have inspired me that's awesome because when i hear that it reminds me that i'm on a really powerful path mm -hmm. to help impact others and that's what i care about is what i want to do it's hard work to do this. And in fact, for, um, I had someone not long ago tell me, I really wanted to start my podcast. And, yeah. and I was like, I had been thinking about it for a long time. And this guy said, you know, you're being really selfish by not starting that podcast. I'm like, selfish, what do you mean? And he said, because you're holding your story inside yeah. of yourself and you're not telling other people wow. and your story is going to help other people people yeah yeah and yeah now there's a podcast you know so it's it's i i hear um over and over that i'm making a difference in somebody's life awesome. that is uh, that's where it's at for me yeah oh yeah definitely you know just like kind of like wow you know you don't realize it with somebody just somebody tell you that you feel like okay you know yeah uh when somebody tell you that you know uh you're impacting their life and making a difference you know uh, keep doing it you know like like man yeah, you know, yeah. it just makes me want to go and pack one more life and yeah, one yeah. more like yeah. i i want to do those yeah. things the the award for the speaker of the year it was great to receive the award but yeah. what was really great about it is that it reminded me of my purpose and what i'm yeah. doing and that i'm on a good path it inspired yeah. me to yeah. want to do more and impact more lives that's what that did for me so yeah. that's what i that's what I love. I just want, I like to, we all just kind of like to know every now and then, am I going in the right direction? Yes, I know. I know. Yeah. Yeah. When I first started this and like, I don't know, you know, but uh, when I first started my the website blog, you know, and so, and how people are willing to change their story, allow me to, to change the story with me. 
allow me to share my this same story to do to the world, you know. You know, yeah. people open, you know, like like man, you know, just I just a simple guy, you know, but from the country, you know, uh, but you know, people open up to want to share to their stories, you know, and just I felt like the responsibility, have a responsibility to make sure this story get out, you know. Yeah. Oh so, yeah. So Absolutely. They, yeah, so it's so great. Um so we're getting close to the end. Got a couple more questions to know. I think I got a lot of stuff going on. So what's your why factor? I think the last answer to tell you was your why factor that keep you going even the roughest moments. You know? The things that I have learned to that help empower me to do to do better. I think it's, it's, it's those things. Like it reminds me, you know, my why is definitely my son, but it's, it's that, that pain was so severe, so painful, so difficult. I, you know, it's always going to be with me. I just have learned to live with it better. Mm -hmm. And, and he's really my, my why, but it's, it's, it's kind of like everybody's my why, because again, like I said, I, to impact even one life, Yes. Is my why. Yes. I don't want anyone to feel that pain I felt, not mm -hmm. just not just about the actual loss of haze, mm -hmm. but afterwards that unworthiness, you know, that depression that came in, mm -hmm. it was scary. Mm -hmm. And that is truly my why. I don't I want to take that away from somebody. I want them to be impacted as quickly and easily um, as, as they possibly can through mm -hmm. anything I could possibly say. So my why is actually you, it's you and him and her. And mm -hmm. it's, it's that it's just knowing that I can help someone to feel better and enjoy and experience life in a new way. Okay. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. Just, uh... So since this is live from boundless, and boundless is the key word. What's your boundless motivation or thought in a few words? You know? Oh, <laughs> well, I'm trying to think of this one on my way um, here. And, yeah. Yeah. and I, I was just pondering that. <laughs> you know, I think... I think I really have to go with something big here because okay. it's, it's just popped out into my head and it's written on my chalkboard over here. <laughs> and it's something that I think we all can do. It's not just me. This is not. When I kind of have two things, can I say two things? Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. So the first one is, it's a meme that I actually wrote recently. I was washing dishes and mm -hmm. this came to me. And it's, it's really powerful. And I'm not going to say, remember the exact words, but okay. I'll, you'll get the gist. Yes. When you get out of your own head, yeah. parentheses, take care, uh, think about others. So get out of your own head, think about others. Yes. You, that is when you are truly taking care of yourself. Okay. So getting out of your head, oh, yeah. thinking about others, right. helping others. Yeah. If you can do those things, get yeah. out of your head, start helping others. Yeah. You yeah. are on the path to an amazing life. And that I can tell you 100%. Awesome. So that was my number one thing. Okay. And the other one is through that, yeah. you yeah. can impact the world. Awesome. Nice. That, that's great. That's great. Yeah. That, that is balanced. Yeah. Sometimes you got to get out of your own head. Yeah, so. Got to get out of your own head. It doesn't mean you have to ignore your feelings. It's yeah. not it at all. Be, oh, have awareness. You know, the book that I'm reading right now, it's almost done. Well, I, I actually do Audible because I, I can I finish books while I'm running. It's crazy. It's so good. <laughs> like, I, I do prob probably a book a week. It's, it's awesome. Wow. And um, But it's called The Untethered Soul. Have you heard of it? Uh, no, no, not really. No. Oh, my gosh. You got yeah. it? No. Check out this book. This guy truly gets what I just said about getting out of your own head. Okay, yes. And he helps us to understand that the idea, again, it's not to just pretend things aren't happening because they are happening. 
Yes. But most of the time, you can't really do a whole lot about it because it's already happened, first of all. Yes. And he tries to share with you to just let it pass through you. And if you can find this sense of working with the thoughts that are coming into your head all the time and just kind of let it pass through you, learn from it what you need, let it pass through you, um, that you're truly going to be in, in the most peaceful and joyful place that you can be. Yes. And it, it truly is amazing. And, you know, again, if God's coming with you through that or whatever it is, you're praying on it, um, whatever, however you need to do it. But ultimately, you know, we say things all the time and we, we make up stories. You know, we Brene Brown talks about this. We conjure up stories and it's such it's stuff that's not even happened. And we like and it's so you got to stop that because it's a waste of your energy. And that's also what the, what they, this guy talks about in the untethered soul is that if you can learn how to do this, learn this technique and learn to work through it, you're going to start to have the most beautiful and amazing energy coming through you that you've never experienced it. Like it can become who and how you are all the time. I like that. Okay. That, 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 that's cool. Appreciate that. You know, uh, that, that, that's great. Um, so before, before, uh, you leave, um, uh, before you uh, we get done, do you have any last words that you want to leave, uh, with the family? Yeah. Well, I love you. You say in the family, I think it's awesome. And, and that's truly what we are. And yeah. I think that I would just want to encourage and inspire each and every member of the family. Yeah to believe in themselves, yeah. to love themselves, love others, have appreciation. Again, like I read earlier in the book, it doesn't mean you have to like everything everybody does, yeah. but you know, step back and let's just take some deep breaths and appreciate and love and be there for one another. Okay. I created with, with um, uh, the my company that I'm working with right now, Calvi Health Spa, is one of the top 10 spas in the world and nice. wow. very fortunate. Yeah. I'm an assistant fitness director there. I'm the motivational speaker on there. I life coach there. And um, I, I get to do a lot of things and I have a team there. Yeah, and the team I felt was really struggling to work together. Yeah. And I went to our marketing person and I said, Hey, do we have any like, shared core values or anything. And she's like, no. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like we, this is what we need. So I developed them. I actually asked the team to send me some of their short shared core values. Cause I really wanted it to be ours, not mine. Yes. Um, and that's kind of, you know, the summary probably of this is figure out what your values are and live by them. Okay. Yeah. and reference them and when you're in a moment and you're struggling reference them and yes. it's going to guide you yes. it, it, it's just a beautiful way to live so yeah just work with those values share them with your family work together it'll help you in your decision making okay Th thank you for that uh thank you um Kara, I'm going to, I know, pronounce your name wrong. <laughs> Kara, you're doing it right. You're good. You're good. I think we're taking the time out of your day to join us uh, on the Live Room Balance uh, podcast. Uh, also, thank you, family, for joining me for another episode, another episode of Live Room Balance. I live a life beyond a boundary you set on yourself. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. And until next time. <laughs>